Finally on the show, we've got Nav. What's up? Thanks for a good interview, bro. Appreciate it. All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Could you imagine that was it, bro? It'd probably be the, <laughs> one of the most memorable you've done. I might go viral. Pretty quick. Yep. <laughs> Before business or anything, man. Just, just how is life, bro? How, how are you right now? Um, it's it's great, you know. It has the ups and downs, but everything's amazing overall. I feel like it's the dopest thing. I always love the stories of producers that turn into like doing their own thing, bro. Like, it, I feel like it's got to be producers to me correct me if i'm wrong i feel like you're the ultimate perfectionist right yeah like when it comes time to put out a record you're the one like no this has the hit right this sounds not there you got to hear that yeah. does it make it tough when you're doing the artist side of things because you it, it's low key like now you're doing the job twice um no just because um i have a background like recording people too mm -hmm. so i'm an engineer as well so it's like i just see the song as a whole you know what i mean like really to me a song like the main things that really matter is the kick drum the snare drum and the vocals as long as those are clear everything else can be background that's so crazy bro you just hear it's just so simple to you i'd be sitting there like yeah but like obviously this is, it's more complex than that but the overall picture is that like as long as like melodies and notes can be heard you'll be all right because people a lot of people like low quality songs being that you know so much about it does that make it easier to work with people that don't get it or a little harder because you're you have a certain sound you're going for and they're just they don't understand it um, like in terms of like working with people like what? Like let's say someone like wants to get you on a record or like somebody wants to sit in a studio with you and construct a beat. Like no, do you work with people like that or are you kind of just trying yeah, to do your with, own? I can work with anyone. It's just like, it's just as long as the person understands the language and music a little bit. Right. We're good. You would have um, made a comment that I saw in, a, in another interview and I was like, dude, that's one of the dopest things to hear someone say. You said, the more successful I get, the more humble I become. Yeah. It's the most complete opposite for everybody else. Mm -hmm. What is it for you? that that puts you like in that mindset um just like humbling experiences you know what i mean like um not putting out such a good album that got like it didn't get such good reviews like uh, it's, we're talking about reckless you know like a lot of people love it and stuff it's just cool but it's like just like those kind of things you know and just seeing numbers go down instead of going up that should humble you yeah yeah and then like you start having a record jump out on the radio or even like bad habits like going mm -hmm. number one mm -hmm. and stuff like that i mean it, it probably makes you appreciate Reckless even yeah, more, the humbleness, right? The humbleness was like, like just a, d a different approach with the album. Like I, I was more involved instead of just rapping on beats and leaving and going to the club. I was like, sitting there all day, every day, no haircut, just working really hard. <laughs> Everyone has like that, like their different approach when it comes to recording. Is that kind of how you are? Like you zone out and you're not worried about nothing else. You're not going anywhere else. You're kind of just in the studio and that's what it is. Or like, what's your process? Yeah, I learned from like people that I work with, like you know, Abel and stuff. That like for album time, I like. I like to lock down a situation, like lock down a studio, go there every day. Whether we do one song, whether we do nothing, just play video games. I just always want to be there every day. And it's like a whole process in one spot. What is like a normal conversation like with you and him? Nothing. We just send each other like funny videos and shit. It's like how friends are, you know? I think because like when you're a certain artist, like a, obviously like of that caliber, people don't know. Well, just artists in general, I think a lot of people don't know what your personality is. They can judge you based off songs and stuff like that, but yeah. it's hard for them to get to know you. So to hear that you and Weekend are sending wild, stupid ass videos yeah. to each other, that's super dope. What, yeah. what are you into the outside of the music? Like if you, if you just have a chill day, you legit have nothing to do Video with games. nothing on the books. Video, Video games? games, Fortnite, all that. I've never played, bro. Wow. You, uh, it's too late for you. you I, no, I can't really jump into it, right? It's people what, are doing crazy shit right now. What is it about Fortnite that just like got you hooked it's just like the, you know it, it's an iq game you know what i mean it's like whoever thinks fast and smarter oh see i don't even know what it's about i just see like in the videos i see i see like little little just little whatever cartoon characters and i'm like okay it's yeah. it's nothing like that so you're telling me there's actual wit behind this it's crazy bro it's actually mad complex it's really insane. the building is the whole thing that's nuts yeah. bro it's crazy well it's too late for me, he said. I'm so for I'm sure. Just... <laughs> the, learning curve, the learning curve is way gone. I'm just going to watch some stuff on YouTube. <laughs> what, um, how do you link with Meek, bro? Because, I mean, the, the tap record's nuts. Obviously, probably the biggest look you've had so far mainstream-wise, like, really popping. Uh, what is like like what is that studio session like? Do you send him an idea? Are you in the studio together? I don't I don't know the background Oh uh, No, I've I known him for a long time, but we just never did music together. And he, he sent a bunch of songs to my manager. And, um, like, right before we handed in the album. And uh, he picked one and... I I said tap 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 and there it was, and that's it. He just knocks yeah. it out, boom. No, he he sent me a verse, just a verse. Oh really? Yeah. Oh damn! So then you kind of created he around had a whole it. catalog of stuff. Like there's songs, there was hooks, there was like verses. There's just one that stuck out, and that was it. What are you like? What like what are you into? Like outside of like 
your genre of music and things like that? What's something maybe people wouldn't expect you to listen to? I'm like, like the old stuff that people sample to mm. make beats now. I'll be going and listen to originals of that, you know? Like a lot of people play me music. I'm like, oh, you don't know the original song to this? And they'll be like, nah. And I'm like, I know what it is. I have this old mix and I wish I knew. Someone just sent me a link. I don't know who the DJ is. I don't know who it is. And they, it's the dopest thing to where they take you'll hear a quick snippet of like whatever the new version is, but then the way they transition it into the original mm -hmm. and it's certain record. Like I didn't know Dr. Dre next episode was a sample. Yep. I had no idea. There's all mm -hmm. these records and I was just, it's like an hour long. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that's super yep. interesting. That's cool that you're into it. Yep. That's like the producer side of things, right? 100%. Like you just, 100%. do you like sampling? Mm, I, I don't, I don't like it just cause they come try to take too much of your money after, you know? What, what, how does that work? Like you, you have a song. Is there like a set price on it, or do they? Just no, it's like it's like it's kind of like a, like a, um, what do you call it? Like bargaining kind of. Mm. It's kind of like you know back and forth. But at the end of the day, if you sample someone's record and you don't get it cleared, and you if the song turns out big, they could take everything. That's nuts, bro. Yeah, they could take everything. You yeah. got to get it cleared, and getting it cleared sometimes means they're gonna be like, oh, we want sixty percent. Well, fifty percent, and then you gotta like go back and forth, and that's why I just rather not. I could play keyboard and stuff. Do I'll, be all right. I'll be okay. Do you like working with other producers, or are you yeah. so just to the point like you know what you want? It's kind of hard to work with other people. I pretty much never make beats alone anymore. Really? Like never. I'm trying to start more because like you know slacking, but every time I've, I've made a beat, it's with someone else. That's nice. Whether it's with Metro or my producer Money or Trouble or for us, like it's whoever I work with, I, I always make beats with someone. Were you on the road when the uh, Raptors? One or were you home? We went, um, we went to the game before the one they won. We went courtside, me and Cash. Oh damn! Because we had to reschedule the show because we know like no one's gonna show up this gonna go right, the right, game. Right, right, right. <laughs> so we're like, all right, let's just go courtside. We went courtside and they lost, and it was whack. But you know, we got to watch them win. Like after that, that's just it's like historic, bro. I can't on TV seeing the vibe that everyone's going through. I mean, that's just like. I was in a room full. Of, I was everything. in a room full of Golden State fans when when they won, oh and I God. just got up and just screamed at the top of my lungs right in the face. <laughs> that stuff's scary, bro. Like when you go to these games, especially when alcohol's involved, you know, I mean, if the team loses, they're um, feeling some type of way. Especially 100%. like you're surrounded by these people. Was there any animosity, or was it just kind of they like, didn't have a choice? They couldn't do nothing about it. Where I was at. Oh, there you go. They can do nothing about it. You hanging out with the right people, man. <laughs> I got Nicasio and Raquel. <laughs> I'll be taking out quick, bro. Um, let's see. What what should we touch on, bro? I mean, the, the tour is going down. Do, do you enjoy like road life, or do you prefer just kind of being at home? Um, like towards the end, like right now, I'm ready to be home. But this tour has been easier than the last one. You know, just like the people that I have on tour with me, it's a better team. Yeah. And I just been having fun in between times of like working. We always just doing something fun. Yeah, we're uh, what are we in June? Almost July. We're about, I mean, halfway through the year already. Mm -hmm. at, at the beginning of each year, we'll always set a certain amount of like of goals, three or four, put them on a list and check them off midway. Have, when you started off twenty nineteen, did you have some goals, or are we, yeah. do you have some new ones now? Yeah. How, have we hit them? What's going on? I had I had goals written down of going number one first did week. It. I had a vision board in my room with all the things I want this year, and I pretty much got all of them. That's crazy, you right? Know? I believe in the law of attraction a lot. So, dude, I, I don't know if you Jim Carrey has this special. I don't I don't know if it's Netflix or Hulu, but he's talking about every time before he wanted to get a movie role back in the day, like yeah. before he got the mask or anything, he'd audition and then he'd go somewhere where nobody was to like a field and just yell, "I will get this movie." Yeah. He said everyone he did, he got it's every fact. time he, he even did wrote that. A, he even wrote a check. I, I studied a lot of his stuff too. He even wrote a check to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the amount of whatever from whatever, and he got it from Dumb and Dumber. Dude, I we we had started our um, well, I didn't do that like that. I ain't got that kind of money. But when we started our syndication, because we we own our own radio show, so like here we come into the building, use our studios, but we own the show, and so it's in all these cities. But when we first started it, we only had two stations, mm -hmm. and I'm like, damn it, like I'm taking a risk. And then we got our first check, and I wrote myself a check, and yep. I still have it. It was for three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and I still have that thing framed. And I'll just randomly look at it, like, God, that's, that's right. crazy. Now we're in forty cities. Yep. And it's, I literally write my goals. Like, I'll be like, I will have this by this date at this time, and if it doesn't happen. On that date or that time, I actually believe it's being realigned to happen at a better and more beneficial when time. When you're prepared for it. Yeah, I'm like delusionally positive. No, that's, that's good. Yeah. I used to be 
negative. I'd prepare myself for the absolute worst or just be in that moment like it won't happen, it won't happen, it won't happen. That way when it does, yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. But uh, that, I, I, I don't think that works. Yeah, no, I don't, it does. Me, I just like, my it's mind. Like, I don't know if it's, I think it's a schizophrenic. I think they're, they think the world is plotting against them. Like yeah. everybody's out to get them or something. I'm the opposite. I think everything's plotting for me. That's so dope, bro. Yeah. I like the mind frame, man. Well, look, let's let's close it out. Um, what, like I said, halfway through the year, let, let, is there something we want to get done by by 2020? So then, when we revisit this next year, and we've hit our goals, and you're hitting your goals, we can laugh and talk about this. What's something? I, I just want a number one record. Like, number one record, not an album, like a song, uh-huh. just me solo. Damn. It can happen. Like an old town road vibe. <laughs> right, bro. Could you imagine, bro? Like his whole life changed off that song. Like, congrats, and his album's not bad. Have you heard the album? No, yeah, no, I want to listen to it today though. It's not bad. He's got a cool up. vibe. His fan base. I mean, it's like a genuine. It's, like, it's him being him. Man. No hate, man. Congrats. What if you could like? What, what do you think the main thing is that your fan base comes to you for? I know we're talking a lot. We'll close it right here. But like, obviously, some people have the gimmick side of things. For you, I think people really rock with the music. What is it about you and your sound and your vibe that people relate to so much? I think it's just the vibe of the music and the story behind it and it's like just if you know me if you go back and see like how much work i put in i guess they respect it people always love like a come up story yeah, you know and, sure. you, and you got it mm-hmm. dude nav's hanging out man it's tino cochino radio any final thoughts comments concerns anything no i'm excited for tonight man we sold out sold it, out feels good i'm getting 20 percent of the show tonight because we booked it we're excited guys it's tino <laughs> cochino radio it's nav baby <laughs>